94.9 WDKV, it's Monica. All right, if you are a Beatles fan, you're going to want to make sure that you find your way to the Egyptian Theater this Friday night. They're going to be hosting The Return, a tribute to the Beatles. And I got to chat with Mike Fulop, who is the George Harrison of the group. We talked about what was supposed to be a one-time gig and how it turned into a full-blown tribute show, how they got to record at Abbey Road Studios, the details that go into making the show really special, and so much more. WDKB. Hey, is Monica available? This is Monica. Is this Mike? It is. Where um, where are you calling from? So we are from a small town that's about an hour south of Atlanta, Georgia. Okay, so you're in Georgia. Very far away. Very... <laughs> no, but you're not quite across the pond. Like, you um... right. It, it, could, it could be worse. Right. <laughs> Now, um, as as we're hearing, you you are not British, but you guys um, you do channel that for this uh, this little Beatles tribute that you have put okay. together. So uh, let's let's jump right into this. Tell me your story. How did this tribute come to be? So I, I hate to date myself, but twenty five years ago, <laughs> um, I was a senior in high school, and a group of friends and myself we got together just to play jam on some of our favorite Beatles songs. Yeah. We never we never intended to play concerts or dress up like them, of course. Um, and we were just doing it for fun for about six months. And a local band was having an album release party. And they asked if we would open up for them. And we said, no, no, we're not, we're not playing gigs. And basically, they just kept asking over and over and over again until we finally said yes. <laughs> um, and then, you know, as the gig got closer, we between ourselves, we thought, you know what, we should we should um, like dress up, like wear black suits and comb our hair down. And you know, we didn't tell anybody we were going to do that. We just showed up and did it as a one-time joke, and uh, people went nuts. And, and that day, or the, excuse me, that evening, someone in the audience had was booking at a bar. They said, "Hey, will you guys come play at our bar next month?" And so we said, "Okay, sure, we'll do it." And then you know, somebody at that bar wanted to book us up there. Wow. Bar, and it, it just kind of after at that point we realized, you know what? We've all been playing music for you know for most of our teen years at least, and we've rarely gotten paid for a gig. So maybe maybe we're on to something here. <laughs> yeah, it really it really was pretty surreal. And I mean, over the years, of course, we've we've evolved. Oh yeah, yeah. Had to put a lot of work into it, but yeah, from the start, it was just kind of a it was really a one time thing. Now at the start, you guys went by a different name, right? <laughs> Yes, we were called the Roaches. How did how did you guys land on that? You know, it's it's a multiple reasons. I mean, <laughs> one of the one of the ones was just you know you got the Beatles, the Roaches, the two two bugs. Oh, I didn't even um, put two and two together. That's clever. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people think it might be a reference to something else, but it really wasn't. <laughs> um, but then you know the, this is this is pretty terrible. But when we first started, we were practicing in this old abandoned. I mean, it wasn't abandoned in the sense that it was you know hadn't been used in years but it was it was a grocery store back in the day <laughs> and it had shut down it's one of those old timey ones with the you know with the counters and everything but yeah and uh it shut down and some some people were renting it out and basically practicing and using it as rehearsal space for bands and when we first started playing there that's, that's where we would rehearse uh-huh. and uh our drummer made the joke he's like man we're so bad that even the roaches won't come out and hear us play <laughs> <laughs> you guys got a good sense of humor. That's great. <laughs> now you've since um you've evolved since your days as the Roaches. You've changed the name to the Return, and more than that, you've evolved the show. So something that was just kind of this for fun one time thing is is now something that you guys take pretty seriously and have committed a lot of right. work into making sure that this is this is an incredible tribute to an incredible band. So what was that? What was that discussion like? How did you guys decide, you know, what you wanted to do with the show? I think, like you mentioned and I mentioned, it's definitely been an evolution. It wasn't necessarily one sit-down conversation. Right. Let's get serious about this. It was sort of step-by-step. Step. You know, some of, the, some of the bigger moves might have been, like, getting a manager back in the day mm. or getting a, a new booking agent. Yeah, that's pretty serious. Having <laughs> having the, uh, the Paul McCartney guy in the group. Um, having him learn bass left-handed, that was a that was a huge undertaking. Yeah. Now you guys have played thousands of show in your multi-decade uh, 
history as as the return now here. And you've played some really cool places. Is there is there a gig that was ever just like, oh my God, pinch me? There have been quite a few. I think the ones that we'll never forget are uh, we actually got to do a gig at the um, Abbey Road Studios once. Awesome. And that was a that was very very awesome, very strange because we had already been doing this for seven or eight years, and so the whole butterflies thing had kind of long gone. Like we didn't get nervous anymore when we you know hit the stage. Mm-hmm. And I just remember doing that show. And all day, everything was fine leading up to it, sound check. But once we started playing, just the heaviness of it kind of hit me. Mm-hmm. And when we when we were finished, I remember we all kind of ran off into a, there wasn't a dressing room, it was <laughs> the studio. There was a bathroom that was off the, the studio. And we ran in there and I, was, I told the guys, I said, man, I'm kind of embarrassed to say this, but I was so nervous. I said, I feel like I could hear my you know, heartbeat in my chest and everybody, <laughs> the rest of the guys all said the same thing. They said, yeah, I don't know what happened, but. You know, it's, it was really just unbelievable, unbelievable experience. Yeah, I can I can only imagine just the energy of being in a place packed with that much history. Lots of history. Um. So yeah, but it's it's great that you were you were present enough to to kind of take it in and and right. understand how important it was to be there, especially doing the act that you were doing. It's it's legendary. So congratulations on having an opportunity like that. You've played. Um, you played a lot of worldwide Beatles celebrations. Yeah, we did. Uh, another thing that, that sticks out in my mind is we did, just a couple of years ago, we did a five-week tour of Japan. Uh, we got to play about 20 different cities, and that was unbelievable just to just to be there. And, and the people over there were so fantastic. But then also, we got to do sightseeing on our days off, so it was just an amazing experience. What a cool opportunity. That's uh, that's just, I guess, more of the uh, the perks of a gig like this. Now, of course, it is, <laughs> it is, um, it's about the love for the Beatles. Obviously, something that you must have in order to do this, and the attention to detail that you guys give to this show is likely what sets it apart from so many other Beatles tributes. And it's something that you alluded to when you mentioned how you had um, your bassist learn how to play like Paul does. Um, are there any other little things that you guys have said, you know what, we really want this to be as close to perfect as we can, so we're going to we're gonna make sure that our show has this? Yeah, I think a lot of people don't understand um, just what goes, behind, goes on behind the scenes as far as the instruments are concerned. Yeah, this, the first time we ever played 25 years ago, we certainly couldn't afford the instruments. We <laughs> got up there with whatever we had, but, you know, over the years, that was definitely a high priority was to try to get you know, the same exact models that they had, that the Beatles used. And then, you know, even the, the costumes is a, it's one of those things where, I mean, they're, they're hard to come by. They're very expensive and good costumes. Uh, yeah. Then you wear them out, you know, so we're up there moving. So, you know, you have to keep buying new ones all the time. So there's, there's a lot that goes on behind it. Just trying to, trying to be authentic, as you mentioned. Is there a particular era of the Beatles that you prefer? Because there are definitely like stages in the Beatles' career. <laughs> right, right. I, I enjoyed all of it. Um, for for many years, we actually only did the early era. Okay. Um, where, you know, most bands do all of it. Um, so early on, we just stuck to the early stuff. I think we, we really enjoyed the energy of it. Um, eventually, it got to the point where we had enough people requesting the later material that we, we started doing that as well. And, I mean, we, I, we've always loved the music, but we kind of fell in love with playing the later era stuff as well um and you know really the the early Beatles songs are so short they are that to, that to do 90 minutes we were having to play like 30 songs right and you know you, you start playing songs that the average person might not know you know people who are the deep were deep cuts then. yeah yeah they remember the b-sides but the you know some of the younger kids today they don't they don't really know all the uh all the obscurities so so it, the, the cool thing about playing all the eras is you get to really uh, you get to play a ton of number one hits, so that's that's pretty amazing. Yeah, that's great, and um, not like there aren't a lot to choose from. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> so, uh, what can what can the audience expect to see at your show that you're bringing here uh, on Friday? So it looks like you're well, going to be spanning uh, a big catalog of their music. Yeah, so the first set will be you know the early era Ed Sullivan, so basically 1963 to 1965, somewhere in there. Um, and then the second set, we're kind of focusing more on uh, White Album, 
Abbey mm-hmm. Road era. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I don't believe we're doing the Sergeant Peppers at this one. Some we kind of go in and out as far as what we focus on. Uh, you know, Abbey Road was a big uh, anniversary last year at the end of last year, and now yeah. Let It Be's coming up. So kind of shifting our focus towards that. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, there's only like I said, the show's only so long. So we'd love to play everything. <laughs> Right, but but it would be it would be a, a half a day experience, I think. Well, it's a good problem to have. <laughs> definitely, definitely. <laughs> are there um are there costume ca- changes? Yes, yes. So we'll we'll have we'll have the, the Ed Sullivan look for the first set. And yeah. The second set will be more of like a, a little you know a little hippied out, a little longer hair. So the hair changes. <laughs> the hair changes. Yeah, it's it's amazing how that happens. It's, it's like magic. <laughs> That's great. Well, it sounds like you guys have built something, something really special, and uh, we're excited to have you guys bring it here to uh, DeKalb real soon. We are excited to be there. Can't wait. Awesome. Well, hey, thanks for uh, thanks for a little bit of your time today, Mike. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. That was Mike Fullup. You'll see him as George Harrison this Friday night at the Egyptian Theater. Tickets to see the return, a tribute to the Beatles, are available at EgyptianTheater.org. You can also find a direct link on our community calendar at 949WDKB.com.